Joining us now is Jeremy Bash, the former chief of staff at the CIA and the Pentagon, but also was a st top staff member at House Intelligence. So you know all sides, <laughs> Jeremy. As an attorney, former Pentagon and CIA chief, so how pivotal was this, this White House meeting and the Trump tweet that immediately followed to placing him, beginning to place him at the center of a conspiracy, as alleged? Well, Andrea, on December 18th, 2020, whether we like it or not, Donald Trump was the commander in chief for the United States Armed Forces. And so when we think about a coup, we think about a military leader using the apparatus of the state, the security apparatus, to basically achieve a political outcome that couldn't have been achieved by the will of the people. And so the idea that he would be meeting in the White House with a former general officer of the United States Army, General Michael Flynn, talking about using DOD resources to seize voting machines, to interfere mm -hmm. in the election, and to run elections, I can hardly think of something more un-American. It shows you, Andrea, the extent to which Donald Trump was going to use his power to stay in power. It wasn't just seizing the voting machines that, that came up reportedly based in what we heard from the hearing testimony. It was this idea of rerunning elections as a whole, Jeremy. I mean, just just totally speculative, baseless claims that they had been discussing here. Yeah, and apparently, Hallie, it was based on a very warped understanding of the authority that the United States government, the United States military has to protect the cybersecurity of certain critical infrastructure. And even if you believe that our intelligence and military communities have a role in protecting against cyber threats, to take that all the way to the extreme of rerunning elections and the, uh, under the theory that somehow the voting machines were tainted or, or hacked, I mean, that shows you the extent to which Donald Trump was actively discussing something that, I, as I said, I can hardly think of as more un-American. Un and, and to the point that Liz Cheney made at the end of her powerful presentation, our first president, George Washington, resigned his commission in the general, uh, as general of the United States Army to become president for the very purpose that we do not want the United States military in any way involved in politics. We don't want the military involved in controlling uh, the political decisions of the military. We don't want them involved in politics at all. And I think Donald Trump pushed a very, very dangerous line with what he did. So, Jeremy, looking forward, if Donald Trump run, war, runs again, say he wins again, and say there's a Republican-controlled Congress with a lot of Trump sympathizers, and Donald Trump is able to install the people that he wants in cabinet positions for defense secretary, um, and he ordered this sort of thing again, say he really wanted to, to stay in power and he ordered the seizing of voting machines or ordered a rerun of the election, are you confident that... Um, well, what do you think would happen? Yeah, uh, Katie, I have a st very strong view. I know the character of the men and women who serve our nation in uniform as professionals in our intelligence agencies and in our Department of Defense. They would never, never defy the oath that they also swore to our Constitution. They would never go along with such a coup plot. It, it would just be an anathema. I think, frankly, you'd have an insurrection within the organization, mass resignation, and even mass opposition. I do worry, however, wh where I think you're go also going is that if certain people are elected to Congress, and if the, uh, both chambers are in control of one party, whether it's a Republican control or Democratic control, I don't think we should have this crazy system under the Electoral Count Act where essentially a majority can block electors from being certified and things are remanded to the states. And that's why I think it's so important that a bipartisan group of senators are working right now to reform the Electoral Count Act. Because no matter what Donald Trump tried to do by force, if the next person comes along and tries to do it under the color of law or under some theory that there's a, a de jure mechanism to achieve the same outcome, that's what we have to guard against.